where we come to study and learn about worship because we want to know how to please God with our worship. Sometimes the traditions of men aren't what the Bible has outlined for us as what God has instructed and said, this is what I really like. It really pleases me. Now, we, said, we have seen tonight these elements of worship that are here. They're very obvious. We're singing the Word of God. Whenever we worship and praise, what would it be without the Word of God? It would just be songs. It would be like secular music. So we sing the Word of God, and we sing it. That's another element, singing. And another element is musical instruments. Okay? <laughs> but there's a, there's a fourth element. There are four basic elements. The basic four. Okay? And there's an element that is being restored to the church. That is, it helps to make the final product what God originally intended. Okay? He had an intention for our praise and worship. And number one in my book is that he would be pleased and glorified and that he could come and enthrone himself and be ministered to by us. That he would, we would build a house for him and a bow. He would abide in our praises. He would inhabit them and we would minister to him. But he's also added some really good things to where all we have to do is praise him and strongholds are broken. That part of it isn't even our, I mean, we can't do that. Our, our part is to look at the instructions and line ourselves up with God's word so we can open up this whole new world. Well, I believe there are realms of worship in the church that we haven't begun to come into. And I believe part of that is because we're not putting all four ingredients together. There's a fourth ingredient. If you read Psalms 149, it will tell you these basic four singing, musical instruments, the word of God, and there's an ingredient called dance. He said, let them praise my name in the dance. And it just doesn't mean allow them to and don't stop them. When God says let them, that's like saying let there be light. He speaks it into. If he said let it happen, it's going to happen, and there's no devil or demon or flesh or anything that's going to stop it. Not that it, it isn't get, having a rocky road getting started because we're taking it from the camp of the enemy. It's been in the house of the world and the house of the enemy used to glorify the enemy and the devil in, in just, just fleshy, worldly ways. And um, God wants to restore this back to his original intended purpose, to the house of God for his glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's such a unique gift because we min it ministers through the eyes also. It tells a story. We, we all can read body language. You can tell if I'm sad. Sometimes you might say, are you, are you all right? And you'll say, oh, I'm okay. I'm all right, really. But I'm not because you can tell. My body language speaks louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. A picture is worth a thousand words. So there's a real power in what we see. Even my dog knows if I'm upset and go, even if a dog can read body language, I think we've got it down. Babies even know if you're smiling or if you're frowning. It's a powerful, powerful tool. And it needs to be restored back to the church, to the glory of God, for things like praise and worship and intercession and, and evangelism, just to even tell it. Tell who he is. Proclaim it. Tell the good news. Well, we have our first dance that we have tonight is about... The good news. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Power. It's about the good news. Does anybody know that, that the word gospel means good news? So we have some good news for you tonight. If you're out there tonight and you have never really received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have missed step number one, which we call the basic instructions. The basic instruction that you need to get before you go and really make your life what you're called to be is to get in that word, it's all in the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. Get it? <laughs> that's what we're, we're going to evangelize to you tonight, what we're going to proclaim. And we just finished this dance by the skin of our teeth, didn't we, guys? You guys can come up and get in your starting positions. We just finished this Tuesday, so 
God have mercy on us. <laughs> okay, so we are going to proclaim evangelistically through the dance, basic instructions before leaving earth, and we're going to lift up Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but live on eternal life. Hallelujah. That's, that, this is only this. Hallelujah. Praise God. Watch out, guys. This life is but a uh, breath. It is, it is just a little testing ground for eternal life, which goes on forever. Seventy years. My, my dad died before he even turned 60. I mean, life can go just like that. So this is only a small blink to what is eternal life. And here's the instructions that you need before leaving earth. Basic instructions before leaving earth.
wake up and I forgot that, oh, I'm on. <laughs> well, praise God. Next we have um, some of our little dancers, and it's the first year for almost every one of these little children. There's a lot of first-year dancers here. We just take whoever comes. We don't care if they're big or tall or heavy or skinny or old or if they're Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Presbyterian Lutheran, uh, Wesleyan. We have every denomination you can think of. I think it's so cool because then when we dance, we get representations of the body of Christ. And we are the body of Christ. Yeah. All right. Are you guys ready? No, I want to hear them say, are you guys ready? Say, yes, sir. Nick, will you come over here for a minute? Come here, Nick. You are the only one that really gave me. Come here, Nick. <laughs> now, that was a good response. He could be an example seller. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys ready for battle?
will never forget that word now. They will never forget their armor because they learned that in a song and they did it with movements. They'll be, it could be an old man or an old lady and they could tell you, got my feet shod with the preparation of peace. They will know that. This is a good way to put the word of God into kids. It, it, re it really is. Um, I do not know if we're ready out there, but that's okay. I have a little bit to say. This is, um, we only have two more things left for you. And we're done. Boy, it goes fast, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, this next piece that we're going to do, I'm very excited about. Because we had such a, um, we had such a turmoil in the developing of this. We've had a lot of warfare in this next dance, even just, even in the choreography, I just would get confused and have to battle to get everybody's parts and line everything up. There's been warfare this year on the dance company and the dancers like we've never had before and it's so obvious. I mean it's just obvious warfare. And um, I have to tell you the story of how this music came to us because it's, it makes it much more interesting for you to, to be ministered to by it. About, mm, I don't know, maybe two years ago, I was at Dottie Schmidt's church, a church in Maryland, ministering for a conference, and there was another woman there from Ireland who was a, uh, one of their popular song artists, and she had come to minister in music, and we had seats designated right next to us, so we got to know each other pretty well. We ate together, and we sat together, we exchanged, you know, I gave her my books and tapes and videos, and she gave me her CD, CD, CD couple CDs. And I had listened to her CD a couple of times, but I just, you know, I'm busy with a lot of things, and I really didn't get to it. And then this summer, after two years, the Lord was telling me, get that, get that piece out, uh, get out that CD. So I was listening through it, and this one uh, Celtic warfare piece um, just kept speaking to me, but I was almost... I was very reverent about whether we should do this because it's very powerful in warfare. I mean, it is just shouting, shouting out warfare. I mean, there, I just could sense that I, with awesome fear and respect, should I approach this? Plus, as you see, we have children. This ministry is almost all children. We have one women's class of eight women. The rest of us are all young people. And I didn't, <laughs> including me. <laughs> The girls said yesterday, they're like, how did your birthday get past this? Why didn't we say it? I said, when you're going to be 49, you don't advertise it. So it slipped right by them. Oh, I just told. <laughs> okay. But um, so this piece had come to me from a woman in Ireland, and it's not like popular music in the United States or something you just go out and, and buy in the store. So God had put it in my hands, and then at a designated time said, look at this. Um, so I started praying about it and still just wasn't sure because I really had the fear of the Lord in this, especially with leading the children into it. And um, he gave me, uh, he had finally given me an okay in my spirit. This was in September and saying, you know, out of the mouths of, of children, he's ordained praise to silence the enemy and their children. And he said, they're under your covering and they're under my covering, the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to be okay. And uh, so he told us, prepare war. Be prepared for war. I didn't want that word. I really did not want that word. And for two weeks after the Lord gave me this word, prepare war, I tried to pretend and fool myself, that it really, hoping it wasn't the Lord. But he brought it back to me and said, I told you, this is my word, prepare war. And so we had studied a lot about, um, really not so much about warfare itself, but about really the best weapon of all, walking in righteousness and purity. That's your best weapon against the enemy, is not giving him any, any room. And um, on this CD, it was recorded in this place in Ireland called the Valley of Angels. I had never heard of it before. I'd never heard the music before. I'd never heard of the singer before. I'd never heard of the Valley of Angels before. And it's on the CD. In fact, as we do our processional in, I want you to not just be taken away with watching the dancers, but listen, he's going to tell the story that in the Valley of Angels, in the days of St. Patrick, isn't it interesting? We're in the week of St. Patrick's Day right now. We didn't plan it that way. But 
that when St. Patrick, as a missionary to Ireland, when him and his men would win, win over different heathen kings, they would build big fires, and the flames and smoke would go up in Ireland, and they, there was this valley where they had, um, were burning these fires to celebrate that they had you know, won these kings over to Jesus. And what happened, and this is historically true, St. Patrick and his men saw there was a manifestation of luminous angels all around, and they were singing. I had never heard that before. And it was in the Valley of Angels. And um, this took place in a, this is so cool, are you ready? Do you realize that we are in Bay City, Bangor Township. This is where your feet are right now, in Bangor, Bay City, at Bay Valley, right? The place that this music that we're going to dance to tonight was recorded is in this place I'd never heard of called Bangor Bay Valley of Angels. All we're missing are the angels, but I don't think we're missing them. <laughs> I don't think we're missing them. <laughs> oh. Now that's not all. I'm thinking, that is so cool. We'd already had the okay from God, and then I heard, then I realized that was recorded live in the Valley of Angels, where St. Patrick and his men won victories, at Bangor Bay in the valley, and that's where we are. So just as I'd gotten that word in September, there's a thing called the Elijah List in the, in the um, email, and um, one of the women in the dance class got, got a thing off the Elijah List the same weekend that we were just praying and praying. And what it was is, um, I think it was Peter Wagner was at a worship conference, guess where? In Ireland, guess where? In the Valley of Angels. I'd never heard of it before. All of a sudden, Peter Wagner's at a worship conference in the Valley of Angels, giving a prophetic word that God wants to release himself in the earth in a new dimension, and one of the things he's going to use is Celtic warfare. We'd already decided to do this. I mean, we'd gotten the word from the Lord. Isn't that a confirmation? <laughs> yeah. And the word didn't happen in California that he gave a word about Celtic warfare. It happened at, in Bay, Bangor Bay. That's where we are right now. So we're just saying these are just really cool things, God. They're just cool things. And we went ahead with this thing. We've had to push to get this dance. But it is anointed of God, and it is, it is designated for this place at this time tonight. Now let me tell you this. Praise and worship. And with the dance, with that fourth ingredient, the Bible says it, it executes vengeance on the enemy. That it just it puts shackles on him. It stops him. So if you have something that needs, it's a stronghold, we all have strongholds, that need broken, you claim that right now. You claim that tonight during this dance. But we have one thing as the dance company that we are lifting up and dedicating this dance for. You know the little boy that got picked up like Jesus and the dark-haired boy on the other side? They're brothers of a little baby. There's, they also have two little sisters in the, in the dance company. A little newborn baby who, throughout the pregnancy, the, they've told the mother, this baby, you know, some other families that might not be Christian might abort this baby because the chances were not good. The chromosomes were, were off. They said severely deformed, retarded. Um, that the heart wasn't growing right, everything. So we prayed for this baby, and the mother got a word that she should call the baby Mercy. She felt like the Lord spoke that to her, call her Mercy. And her little girl came home from school and said, Mama, if, that ba if our baby lives, we should name her Mercy, because that would be God's mercy if she lived. So we prayed all the stance here for baby Mercy before she was born. And baby Mercy is born. Her parents are here tonight, and baby Mercy's home tonight. But as dancers, we know the power of dance. As we had one of our dancers come out of a coma after five months, when her parents brought her to one of our dance presentations and we dedicated our dance to her, she had been in a coma for five months and was still in the coma. And as we danced and dedicated it to her, her first memory was us praying and dancing for her. It broke the coma, and she was brought out of the coma. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I, I just tell you this to tell you that there's demonstrations that this is, that the dance 
in spirit and truth really is a weapon of war and it will break strongholds of the enemy. And we want to claim for tonight, when there's a part in this dance, when we do warfare, we don't th say, oh, devil, devil, and focus on the devil. We're just lifting up Jesus. We're just lifting up Jesus, lifting up Jesus. And we say, we lift up Jesus Christ, and we're going to lift up Christ again. And when the boys come forward with Jesus lifted up, it says, have mercy, O oh God, have mercy, uh, have mercy. And us dancers, with every beat of the tambourine, with every beat of the drum, with every foot, there's a lot of feet coming up here to do this little step like this. Boom, 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 boom. Every step is in dedication of praise to God and asking God, have mercy on baby mercy. And when she gets her little heart check next month, they said it'll be a miracle if her heart's growing because it's not growing on one side. She'll have to have some kind of surgery. We want them to check that heart and say, this heart is growing and this baby doesn't need surgery. Yes, yes, mercy. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. And as Pastor Dave said, when we line ourselves up with the command of God, we know that God has said, do this, and we do it. We can expect you to move. We can open up a whole new realm. We ask that a new realm in everyone's heart and worship would be open and that strongholds would be broken in this place tonight over everyone that needs a deliverance from whatever it may be. We pray that we'll hear testimonies after this of the breaking of strongholds. Thank you, Lord. We expect it. We need to expect it. In Jesus' name, amen. The cry of the Celts. Ireland is a Celtic nation. And there's been nothing that has shaped the Celts more than Christ over these last 1,500 years. Christ was brought by that great Celtic missionary, Patrick, and he traveled all over Ireland. And as each barbarian king was one to Christ, fires would go up over Ireland. All over the mountains were fires lit to acknowledge that Jesus Christ was king over all the earth. As Patrick and his companions traveled north, they came to this beautiful area. And the story is told, legend has it, that this land suddenly filled with a great light. And they saw with their eyes luminous angels all over this valley. And they were singing like a great host. And so they established a great work here and they called it the Valley of the Angels. And in this very place, this Bangor Bay, this very place, Columbanus established a house of worship, a 24-hour perennial house of worship. And praise and worship ascended to heaven 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And because of the devotion to God, missions flourished, intellect flourished, scholasticism flourished, and Bangor Bay became known as the light of the world. As we worship in this place, even now, even now, our prayer is that this very Celtic worship will go to the earth. Let's begin to pray right now. Let it go to the nations. Lift up your cry. Lift up your cry. The cry of the Celts going to the nations.
make your enemies a footstool. You will make your enemies a footstool. You will make your enemies a footstool until Christ becomes all in all. Oh, we lift up Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, oh God. Have mercy on the world, oh God. branch of Restored to Glory Dance Ministry that is in Indiana. We have Michigan, and then my sister Peggy moved to Indiana, and she had been working with me here, and she has started a branch of Restored to Glory in Indiana, and that's our sister team, and it's just wonderful, the unity between the girls and the guys, <laughs> and they have come, they took the day off school to drive here and to minister, we shall behold him to you today, so we're going to end with what we're all looking forward to is when we will behold Christ face to face.
the sky shall unfold preparing his entrance the stars shall applaud him with thunders of praise the sweet light in his eyes shall Shall enhance those awaiting And we shall behold Him Then face to face You know this, sing it with us Behold it. We shall behold it. Face to face in all of his glory. Shall rise from 